We're just beginning this adventure of precision tests of fundamental physics in space, and we're still developing the technologies. It'll be a while, uh, but it, it has tremendous promise uh, to where we could do things that aren't possible on the Earth. So could we start, could you give me an overview of what uh, physics at, uh, at NASA means? Sure. I mean, some people might ask, you know, why physics at NASA? Aren't they about space? Don't other government agencies do physics research? And the reason is, is we want to use the unique environment of space to do these ultra-precise tests of fundamental physics that you can't do on the ground with the same level of precision. You know, the ground is too noisy. Um, if we're measuring gravitational fields, for example, um, tides and rainfall and human activity affect the local gravity that the instrumentation that we're using would pick up. In fact, that those background signals are larger than what we would be trying to search for in space. So by going into space, we get away from that. And then space offers other advantages because we can go to different gravitational potentials, far away from the Earth and orbit around the moon, around other planets, or even the sun. Uh, and we could also get larger distances because sometimes some of these measurements require a separation between devices and we can get very long distances in space and we can get very different velocities, which is another aspect, another parameter in our search space that we want to be able to vary to explore the kind of phenomena that we're trying to examine. Give me some examples of projects that uh, you've carried out. Mm. Uh, well, right now, one of our um, most exciting efforts is what we call the Cold Atom Lab and it's on board the International Space Station. It's an instrument that's about the size of a uh, small mini fridge, and it does what normally an entire room full of laboratory equipment does. We're doing atom interferometry. We're doing, um, we're cooling atoms with lasers to where we can treat them as slowly moving individual particles, and we can then make interferometers out of them by exploiting the wave nature of particles. Quantum mechanics tells us that material particles, like neutral atoms, have a wave nature. And we can see that wave nature when the atoms are cold and isolated. And so we can construct uh, interferometers out of these atoms that do very precise measurements. Give me an insight, if you would, into some of the challenges. Because, I mean, it, it sounds totally fascinating and very exciting, but I imagine it's not easy. Oh, no, it's not easy. Um, you know, space is hard. Um, you know, the first challenge is getting into space. And so that means whatever you, your device is, you want it to be as small as possible, as light as possible, and use as little power as possible. And then it needs to be remotely operated because the people are on the ground, the scientists are on the ground. You know, you, when you think about a uh, physics lab is you have professors and students who are tinkering with devices continuously. Well, when it's an operating in space, you can't do that. You have to do your tinkering remotely. So it requires a lot of design effort to make it small, compact, and remotely operable. Uh, and so that's a big challenge. And of course, it takes time and it takes money uh, that uh, make it more expensive uh, than normal laboratory experiments. I imagine it also requires collaboration. Oh, in indeed. Um, because these experiments tend to be expensive, uh, we'd like to team with uh, many partners to you know, share the expense, but also to benefit from the expertise. Because you know, the United States doesn't have a monopoly on smart people. And there are a lot of expertise uh, in, in Europe and in the Far East, and, and we l welcome collaborating with them. So my final question is, what are the next steps? Well, to do more of it, all right? Um, we're just beginning this uh, adventure of precision measurements or precision tests of fundamental physics in space. And we're still developing the technologies. And so we're still a ways away from actually doing the first set of experiments that will advance over what's been done on the ground. And so it'll be a while, uh, but it, it has tremendous promise uh, to where we could do things that aren't possible on the Earth. Well, thank you so much indeed for sharing that with us. We appreciate it. Oh, gl glad to be here with you. Thank you.